This is a large old mulberry tree. Now you can see it's got lots of nice ripe fruit. It's also dropping fruit like crazy. And that's what attracts the bears on a regular basis. I'm hoping that if I give it a shake, I can get myself some fruit without having to sit out here and pick them all day long. And we'll find out if that actually works. I was a bear? Yeah. What, shaking the tree? Yeah, I was about to run. <laughs> you about to run? Look at it, look! Oh my gosh, look at you. The black ones are the ones that are the best. I know, but it smells like <laughs> Well, Chloe likes them. So it's dropping fruit here. If you just give it a shake. Of course, it's also dropping sticks. Now I just gotta fold them in so I don't lose the ones that fell on top of the tarp. And I gotta get out of here before the bear comes back too. It wasn't too bad, got a fair amount of fruit. Got some purple hands. Not a bad haul for a little quick shake of the tarp. Good afternoon, welcome back. We have been working on a few things today. Jafana is out doing some landscaping. It's hot, I'm hoping she'll be back real soon. I have been outside sealing the outside of the, uh, the roof where it meets the wall. You can see it's not pretty, but this is all going to be covered up by beadboard, so it doesn't matter. I was getting making sure that the sealant got in there, got into all the crevices. When I was up here framing, I had somebody take notice of the fact that they could see light right over there at the top. And that is because I had not yet sealed it at the top where that roof panel meets the top of the wall. Now I've been back, I've been going back over that today and I need to get in this crevice because I've already put siding up on the outside and so I can't reach that. So I had to create a little tool, a little extender for this fancy uh, sausage caulker here. So I went, I had a, another tip that came off another one and I glued a piece of tubing to it and then I taped it and the only tape I had on hand was some orange Gorilla tape and I just gave it a little test and it seems to be working just fine. So I am hopeful that, uh, well, there's a little bit of sealant coming out, I'm not sure. I'm hopeful it will hold up enough that I can use that to get in here and run a bead of sealant all along uh, the back of these panels. If I can get the back of these panels done, that's probably the toughest area for me to reach. So there's a little gap right here where air is gonna come through. And I wanna make this place as airtight as I possibly can. There's a, there's a number of reasons. The first one is, is air movement, moisture, um, not being a very efficient way to cool and heat things. And the second one is that ants, any insect you can imagine that'll fit through, it's coming through it. I don't think that crevice is big enough for a mouse to get through, but slightly bigger than that, you'd have vermin come through. So, you need to get everything sealed up. I'm gonna find out if the little adapter that I made actually works. Oh, 
So that's not working the way I thought it was gonna. You can see it's starting to blow out up here. It's really struggling, so... Uh, this is not the solution. What, what I think the issue is that it's just too constricted trying to get through that hole. The hole's just too small. Uh, I also got it on me, which is, uh, which is why I wore this old shirt today. Because I always get this stuff on me. And this is the second time I've worn these shorts and they've been christened. So this is why we can't have nice things. My eventual solution was just to get up in there as deep as I could with the regular tip. Put a bead of caulk along the top. Cut a piece of wood to the angle of the roof. And then just use it as a trowel to push the caulk all the way to the back and seal it up. It wasn't elegant and it wasted a lot of caulk. But it worked. Temperature outside is 92 degrees. It's 78 degrees inside. Humidity is about 59. Outside, it's a little bit lower, but it's hotter. So if I open the windows up, pull some air in, and dry out the air on the inside, I also heat the place up. Apollo has figured out that the best place to be on a day like this is right in front of the fan. We're back up on the build today. We're pushing through the most monotonous little chores, but I'm gonna show you what we're doing today. I'm up in the attic, up in the attic space. You see, ah, oh, hello little ant. That's one of the issues right there. So you see we have a little gap right here and you can actually see daylight through it. If you get all the way up there and look, there's a gap that goes all the way to the outside. And that's because when you put the roof on top here, it was not completely even. The walls were not completely even. So I had sip seal on top of that. That's supposed to seal it, but it really didn't. What I'm coming back to do is seal it from the inside and I'm torn as to whether or not I should try to pump foam up in there or if I should use sip seal. I feel like that foam would probably expand a little bit better and fill that crevice. But one way or another, I've got to get something in there. First, I've got to stop air infiltration. And secondly, as you saw, there was a couple of ants. Insects. Insects will find any way that they can get into the house. It's unbelievable. It's uh, it really is astounding. And you can see all the way down in that corner, I don't know if it shows on the camera, in that corner all the way down there, there's a little gap. So I already used sip seal on the outside, all along the bottom, to try and fill any crevices. With My intention is to go back with foam and fill everything with foam. So as far as this goes right here, I'm probably gonna pump some foam into it before I do anything else. It's hot today, it's like 90, it's in the 90s, low 90s. Um, it's 78 degrees inside, we've got the fan on it, so it's not too bad. You move around, you're a little clammy, a little sweaty, but certainly not like it was last year this time when we were putting the posts and beam up. When we were putting up these posts and beams, building them and putting them up, it was in the 90s and that sun charged the cement up something terrible and it just radiated the heat back to you it was rough so we try to remind ourselves that we've got it pretty easy right now in comparison to what we were doing 12 months ago while i'm chasing down some of the insulation and ceiling jobs on our punch list jafana has been tending to some of the landscaping chores near the wellhead she's planted a bed of munstead lavender to hold the soil down and to add a shot of color to the hill Ants, we got silverfish. What else is going to come out of there? Spider. It's a wild kingdom up in there. 
I settled on a mix and match of the foam and the sip seal. For the areas that had a gap, I pumped the foam in as deep as I could. And then where the roof and wall touched, I ran a thick bead of sip seal and smeared it in good with my finger. One of the biggest challenges is actually getting myself into the space that I need to be in. I'm not as small or as nimble as I once was. This is the glamorous part of house building right here. Yep. This is, this is what makes everybody want to do it. Let's see if I can give you an idea of what we're doing up here as far as the foaming goes. So we've got this recess here. And I've filled that to make it airtight between the roof and the wall. I'll give you what, an idea of what it looks like after yesterday, after I came through and I used sip seal. And basically I was pushing the sip seal into the groove. Hello little ant, your days are numbered. So as you can see, I got ants in here. They find every crevice. They come up the wall, the outside wall, and any crevice here, they come inside the house. Now, those look like carpenter ants. Those are wood destroying ants, which is another reason that this needs to be done is I need to lock them out of the house so that I can put some baits out and wipe them out because they can't be in my house. Pumping foam into the joints between the SIPS panels is a particularly onerous task, but it has to be done. So I came back after work during the week, grabbed a flashlight, and I fought my way into one of the deeper recesses of the attic. The process is simple. There are two channels recessed into the edge of each panel, and the panels are 10 and a quarter inches thick. They contain nine and a half inches of foam. You drill a hole from the underside, six and a half inches deep, every six inches all the way down the line. And then you stick a tube into the hole, and you start pumping in foam. You check the next hole with a stick to make sure that your foam has spread out, and then you move your tube and you do it again. Wear old clothes when you do this because the urethane foam is going to get on you and when it does, those clothes are ruined. Hey buddy, hey buddy, you ready to go, huh? You wanna go home? Yeah, there you go. Well, I work till late, it's uh, I, know, I can't tell what time it is. It's a little after nine o'clock, so I'm gonna head on home, get some rest, go to work at my real job, come back later in the week and see if I can't get some more of this done. Buddy. I'm almost ready to go. I know. Do we have a, like a little container I can put them in? Yeah. <coughs> I thought you were gonna bring me something like this. You bring? You don't you bring... have that much. <laughs> you wanna have that much, but you don't. You don't have that. Well, much. I got more than this. Oh my goodness. No. All right, let's go. Hey, hang on.